So I'm uh, Rabbi Shalom Galperin from Chabad of Windsor, um, and we are in the beautiful shul uh, congregation Shara Shemaim in Windsor. Uh, my probably first memory is um, going to shul with my father on Shabbos. So we would walk to shul, but it, it was, you know, my father was busy throughout the, the week. Yeah, hey, it's supper, dinner, but we don't have a lot of time to talk. And when we would walk to shul, 15-minute walk, um, I grew up in South Africa. So when we would walk to shul, we would just talk about everything and anything. So it was just a nice way of uh, connecting as we were going to shul. Probably when I was five, six, my father was a rabbi, my grandfather was a rabbi, was a very big rabbi in Chicago. I mean, he would get questions from all over the world. They would call him to ask him halachic questions. And I think where really, really solidified it was when so I moved from South Africa, I lived in Chicago, I lived in my grandparents' house, and I would see him getting questions all the time, every day, there would be hundreds of phone calls. And how he just gave the time and the respect and answered so calmly, I was like, you know what, I wanna do that too. My favorite part of being a rabbi is really seeing the impact that you can have on someone in the time of need when they are down or whenever they really need something and there's no one there to help them, and you're able to, even if it may be a small little thing, go and get them something at the grocery store, whatever it is, to the big things of literally helping them, I think that's the biggest satisfaction that you can get. Oh, my favorite Shabbat tradition is when my kids, after they light the Shabbos candles, and they all come over and they give a hug and good Shabbos and now we've started Shabbos. That's probably the best. And then obviously the whole meal, the family time. I think that's probably the best uh, uh, feeling for me. That is a good question. Um, you know what I think? Probably my favorite prayer is when you start off the morning prayers when you say, Hareini Mekabel Alai, when I accept upon myself the, the commandment of loving your fellow Jew. Because I always think about it and say, how can I be commanded to love someone, which is an emotion. You can't tell someone, love someone. It's an emotional thing. You can all think about it. But I, always, I remember hearing this once, and I thought that that was so powerful and it helps me a lot, is that when you do something wrong, you always find excuses. Ah, I couldn't do this. I couldn't go there. I didn't have time. But when someone else does something wrong or drops something, you're like, how can you do so? So the point is, is to love your fellow Jew. As much as you can have excuses, they can have too. So you got to love them. Probably Hanukkah, because that's probably the time that I could probably spend the most time with my kids. Um, they're off from school. Um, Pesach is busy, you know, you're running, you're cooking, you're this, you're that. Pesach also, but I think probably Hanukkah because you can just sit on the floor and just be a father and play dreidel and don't worry about anything else. So probably Hanukkah. Um, <laughs> that's a, I don't know. Um, I have a few. Um, brisket. Um, and everyone's going to say the matzo bowl soup, but nah. Um, challah. Um, and uh, I don't know, so many things. <laughs> you know, I think people think that Judaism is just, you know, some religion that you got to do it, and if you do this, then you're good, and if you don't do this, is you're not good. Judaism, I always look at it, it's not an all or nothing religion. If you do some things, that's amazing. And if you don't do something, you could always become better. Um, but I think being Jewish is not only how you connect to you and God, but how you connect to you and a friend, to another person. Because if you look at the Ten Commandments, they're sort of split in half, right? Five on one side, five on the other. Five are between me and God. Five are between me and a, another human being. So 
if it's so if it's not so important, why would that be part of the Ten Commandments? I think it's be an example, a shining light for for the whole world. If you're wanting to do it, follow your passion. You know, just be uh, genuine, be honest. You don't have to hide. You don't have to become someone that you're not put on a fake because people see that. Just be true, genuinely, you know, care about people regardless of who it is and just want to help. And I think if you're true to it, if you're genuinely true, you'll be able to help people. When I was younger, before I got married, I said there's a lot of things that would be nice to do that I know that after I got married, probably not going to happen. So when I was in Sydney, Australia, doing my smicha, becoming a rabbi, I was coming home for Pesach. So I went around the world, went to many different countries. But then I also went to New Zealand. And in New Zealand, I had the, the um, privilege, I didn't tell my parents until a lot later, after I did it, um, and you'll see why in a second, is I decided I was going to do uh, skydiving. So I skydived 15,000 feet um, and then bungee jumped off a bridge. I don't, uh, few hundred meters I don't remember how many but I only told my parents after so <laughs> most people won't know that <laughs> you know Windsor has always been um, I think the uh, a, an incredible beautiful place it's sort of the a suburb of Detroit right it's the only thing that's separating us is the Detroit River there's so many hidden gems, for example, like the Shara Shemayim here. There's so many hidden gems for people to just come over. It's not that hard, now especially. And just to see the beauty of a Windsor house, the riverfront from the opposite end, now looking back at the GM Towers and all that. Having a tour of the Jewish sites over here. And the history is just so beautiful. And I think it is something that Detroit or Michigan doesn't really have to offer like Windsor does.